Greetings. This week's lecture is on Fences by August Wilson, which was a play that premiered in 1985. A little bit of background on August Wilson. He's born in 1945, dies in 2005. He's the author of a 10-play cycle known as the Pittsburgh Cycle, where each play is set in the same African-American neighborhood in Pittsburgh known as the Hill District. And each play also focuses on a different decade from the 20th century. He won the Pulitzer Prize for two of the plays in this cycle, including Fences from 1985 and The Piano Lesson two years later from 1987. The main character, Troy Maxson, is kind of inspired by two people, um, one of whom is August Wilson's stepfather, David Bedford, and the other being Josh Gibson, who is a, a kind of a baseball legend in the Negro Leagues. Um, Wilson is also heavily influenced by Malcolm X. He, he becomes a member of the Nation of Nation of Islam, and a lot of his plays promote the message of black self-reliance and independence. I have, I have a couple slides here just kind of giving you an overview of that, the Pittsburgh cycle, sort of when, which decade it uh, the play focuses on. You can see the fences is set in the 1950s here, um, and also when he wrote the, the the plays um or when they when they first premiered <clears throat> um to briefly go over the plot of this play again we're, it's set in in 1980 ni sorry 1957 to 8 and the last scene being troy's funeral is kind of set in 1965 troy maxson is a garbage collector in pittsburgh he's bitter about not having a shot at the major leagues um because he is this kind of uh, amazing uh, baseball player. He wants to be a driver instead of just a garbage collector. He wants to kind of, uh, which, which in the play, those are the positions held by whites in his union. Um, and over the course of the play, he actually ends up getting that, that promotion that he looks for. Um, he also, he's married to Rose, but he ends up cheating on his wife with this woman, Alberta, who we never get to see in the play, but who we learn um, also has his child, has Troy's child, and she dies in childbirth, leaving Troy um, with another child to kind of take care of. Um, so that, that means Troy has three children by, by different mothers. There's Lyons, his first son, Corey, his, his son that he has with Rose. And then Raynell, who's the the baby born by um, Alberta. Um, Troy for, forbids his son from playing football, and we can talk about whether or not that's out of jealousy for you know Troy never got the chance to kind of become this great baseball um, personality that he wanted to be. Uh, but at the same time, he another reason he gives is he's trying to protect his son, like he thinks that um, his son. He thinks that if Corey gets to play, he'll end up just sitting on the bench and doesn't want his son to kind of go through that disappointment that he went through. Um, he's also, again, the place called Fences. He's throughout the scenes, he's, he's sort of in the backyard building this fence for Rose, um, which we can kind of think about the, the symbolism of that. Is it about keeping family in or is it about pushing death out? Because um, Troy also has a couple run-ins with death in this play and eventually does die at the end of the play. Rose, his wife, um, there's a scene where, where she's seen playing the numbers, which is um, basically a, a form of the lottery. Uh, she kind of believes in chance and has kind of the, these, these hopes that Troy is very kind of uh, uh, opposed to, he doesn't believe in chance, he kind of believes in hard work and um, um, doing things for yourself, like earning money for yourself rather than, you know, waiting for um, your the right ticket or the right number to come in. Um, he support Rose supports Corey going to college, but again, Troy is, is skeptical about that, that decision. Um, again, Troy doesn't really see uh, Corey playing football as an opportunity to, to get an education. He sees it as this, this kind of trick that is just being dangled in front of him that's then going to be taken away at some point. Um, Rose 
also agrees to raise Raynell when she's born um, after Troy learns that Alberta died in childbirth. And she's this kind of an image of a, a very faithful wife. Fidelity is kind of a, a theme in this play in some ways. So Rose might be the opposed to Troy in that sense. Um, their son, Corey, again, wants to play football, wants, wants this opportunity to go to college. He kind of has this scholarship um, opportunity that Troy basically refuses to, he, he refuses to meet with the college rec recruiter and forbids him from playing football. So that at the end of the play, instead of going to college, Corey goes off and joins the military. And then there's um, Troy's brother, Gabe, who was severely brain damaged in World War II. Um, we kind of find out over the course of the play that Troy used Gabe's $3,000 that he got uh, once he came back from the war. He used that money to basically pay for his house, um, even though even though Troy claims that he's responsible for Gabe and is taking care of Gabe. I think a question that comes up in this play is, well, actually, how much how much is Troy really doing that? Because Corey sort of calls him out on uh, the way that he treats his own brother a few times. And um, Gabe also bounces back and forth between the prison, between hospital, the hospital and Miss Pearl's apartment. So he has a place to live, but he's also kind of arrested several times for disrupting the peace. And then it costs, every time he gets arrested, it costs um, Troy $50 to bail him out of prison, out of jail. So some, some important, I think, historical context for this play. Um, again, even though the play is written in the 80s, it's, it's set in the 50s. The play begins with this interesting almost essay about um, the American dream or opportunity in America. And it has this, this um, these two sentences, for the immigrants of Europe, a dream dared and one true. Like immigrants came to this country from Europe and had all these opportunities in the early 20th century. Um, but the descendants of African slaves were offered no such welcome or participation. Um, again, we learn Gabe is, he fights in World War II, gets severely um, brain damaged from that experience, and then comes home only to be routinely thrown into prison for disturbing the peace. So um, it's it's almost like the question the play is asking is like, well, what did what did he go and fight for and how... How is he being um, kind of thanked for his service in the military? And it's actually a question that sort of comes up at the end of the play when we see that Corey, Troy's son, has also ended up in the military. He's a corporal in the Marines. And so the play sort of ends with this question, what version of America is Corey defending? Is it the same version that Gabe defended? And again, because the play ends in 1965, which is shortly after um, America was kind of increasing its involvement in Vietnam, it sort of leaves us with this question of like, well, is Troy going to go off and fight in Vietnam? <clears throat> um, the other thing going on here is the context of kind of desegregation. Again, there's a landmark U.S. Supreme Court decision in 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education, which ends segregation in public schools. But is the play suggesting segregation is a step forward for civil rights for African Americans? Or is it highlighting the challenges presented by integration for the black community? Um, which, which is why I think this play is kind of interesting because it does present this kind of nuanced version of uh, the civil rights movement. Um, there's this discussion, we see this, this skepticism about um, integration and desegregation kind of through Troy's eyes. There's this conversation that he has with Rose about uh, Pope's restaurant, who's a a uh, African-American restaurant owner who once, um, once, a, once white customers are kind of frequent his, his restaurant more often, um, Troy notices that Pope is giving more service and attention and like gives more stew with more meat in the bowl to the white customers than he does to other, African, other African-American customers. Um, and at the same time, another, another way in which this question kind of comes up is Troy does receive that promotion that he wants, um, of being, he, he gets to drive, uh, which again is a position that the union had held mostly for white, 
um, workers at the time. So he does kind of break that barrier and he gets this promotion, but at the same time, he's still a garbage hauler, right? He's still hauling white people's garbage. So is that really a, a huge step forward? Um, so some of the themes that come up in this play are responsibility, which Troy really embodies this one. And, and he keeps talking about the burden that he has um, primarily with his family. So we can, we can kind of think about how is Troy responsible for his children, for Lyons, for Corey, for Raynell. Um, and how is he responsible for his, his brother, Gabe? Is he exploiting Gabe by taking his money to pay for his house? Um, for leaving him in prison, refusing to pay his $50 to bail him out, which he ends up doing in act two, scene two. Um, he, we also learned that, you know, when Lyons was growing up, uh, Troy was in prison most of that time. So like, yeah, feels in, feels indebted to Lyons for, you know, because he's his father wants to teach him, um, how to, how to survive and how to live in the world, but at the same time, wasn't there. Um, and that, that kind of raises this issue of debt, right? He doesn't want to lend Lyons money, but also was in prison for most of his childhood. Um, he also goes off on this story about how he's been paying interest for the furniture in his house for 15 years, which Rose says is, you know, embellished, <clears throat> but it, it kind of draws attention. It, it sort of reminds me actually of Torvald, um, from a doll's house who doesn't, you know, hates the idea of being in debt. Um, and generational trauma, which is a theme that's come up in most of the plays we've seen this semester, most of the plays we've been reading, I think because this is kind of a Greek, uh, a Greek tragedy um, staple or, or main, main theme from Greek tragedy, right? Fathers usurping sons and the cycle repeating. So Troy despises his own father who tried to rape a girl that he was sleeping with. Um, Troy is similarly usurping his son's dream of playing football and of going to college. So the, in a way, it's like what he hates about his father is exactly what he's kind of repeating and doing to his own son. It just appears in a different form, right? And Corey ends up going into the military like Gabe Lyons ends up in the workhouse in the same way that um, uh, Troy had spent time in prison for murder. <clears throat> um, so the cycle kind of repeats itself and where does, where does it break? And then finally, as I mentioned in my earlier slide, this ambivalence towards desegregation, how is Troy benefiting from integration or desegregation? Again, he gets a promotion, but isn't his promotion just, uh, another opportunity to, to haul garbage for white people? Um, so some questions that we could think about are, you know, why is this play called Fences? There's this line that Bono has, some people build fences to keep people out and other people build fences to keep people in. Um, so what does it mean for Troy to complete building this fence? Why does Rose want the fence there? Um, we might also think about some, some parallels to for, between this play and other plays we've read this semester, primarily A Raisin in the Sun and A Doll's House. How is Troy similar to Torvald? Um, and also to Walter, like, um, it seems like, it seems like Troy has a dream in the same way that Walter does, but Troy is kind of looking at it from, from the, as if the dream has already passed, his opportunity to have that dream fulfilled has, has already passed him by. Whereas Walter is kind of thinks that he has this opportunity to attain his dream. His dream is still in front of him, right? How does Rose compare to the women in A Raisin in the Sun? What is her response to patriarchal authority, which is also a theme in all three of these plays? Um, is Troy a dynamic or a static character? I feel like a lot of the protagonists we've looked at this semester have been dynamic characters, but Troy actually, again, not a lot changes about his attitude over the course of the play. Um, and then what is the point of Troy's song about the dog Blue? Why do Corey and Raynell sing this song at the end of the play? Again, it could be that uh, this is a song kind of paying tribute to this loyal loyalty and this dog that um, Troy once had, but at the same time, 
uh, Troy seems to express a lot of bitterness about that loyalty and about the responsibility he has for his family. Thank you.